Shazam! You're welcome. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today, we're taking a look at the Metacom Mafex, or Mafex, or Mafex, Marvel Avengers Infinity War Thor, number 104. Metacom, as a company, sometimes trips over their own feet. It, they get to a certain point, and you're like, oh, I love this line, and then they whip throw something in there that, yeah. hey, let's change up the shoulder engineering or make two lines like DC's movie Suicide Squad and then the Dark Knight trilogy, two different scales, two lines that you think, oh, they could go together on the shelf in one big display. You can't do it. There always seems to be a QC issue or something, but not as much as it used to be. So in my brain, I still feel like they're moving in a positive direction overall. Looking at the package, it's your standard Mafex, kind of that dollar store generic look to the whole thing. I, I don't know why that just sticks in my brain with their packaging styles. But you see the figure, very unflattering pose for Thor in this package. Hey, get off my lawn! And you don't quite see all the accessories, there's a whole body hidden down under here. But there's promo shots, there's logos, there's me. On the side, another promotional shot of Thor with all the electricity. On the back, same thing, showing different configurations for the accessories, different things that come with the figure. Creepy bear! On the other side, there's Thor again. On the top, a little window, Avengers logo. On the bottom, legalese, warnings, don't put them in your mouth. The hologram that I've noticed, let's try to get on here. It's also a bit lenticular. Metacom toy shining brightly in the background. Metacom toy official. Whoop. Clever creation company. I feel like that's a little bit harder than a standard hologram to bootleg. But let's get this open, see what's going on here. As always, there is the Metacom stand tape to the back. And like usual, I don't care for these. They're short. They don't hold the figure really well. No instructions. No backdrop. There is the Avengers A in the back. Oh, and it has a little separate case to hold on to the electric effects that go into the torso and hands. That's not bad. Keep them all together. But getting it out of the package, oh man, I am really, really liking this Thor. Right off the bat though, it seems a little light. I don't know why I think that. But looking at the figure, it is such a nice representation of this character. The proportions and the integration of all the sculpt and the parts and the pieces, it's just so good. I haven't went back and closely studied what Thor's costume looks like in Infinity War, but damn it if this doesn't feel like just straight out of the movie. Especially the upper body, just how the arms and the torso look, everything works with each other. The sculpted detail of the armor, mail, or whatever this is on the arms, it's just so... The bracers have a slight wrap to it, the bands coming around. The design that's kind of carried over from Ragnarok, that Jack Kirby lines going everywhere look, it's all in black, so it's kind of hard to see, but at the same time, the light hits it just right, and you can see all working together down to the pants. The pants do just have some diagonal lines, some straight up and down lines, some plainness, but I don't know, that kind of works with the design of the upper body. It almost gives it a more powerful look because you're not paying attention to the legs and the boots are just kind of plain. Oh yeah, the legs are there, but look at that upper body. <laughs> and maybe that's meant to be part of the design of the movie, but again, the figure just brings it across. And then honestly, there's not a lot of paint here. There are different plastics used, like the matte black of the torso and then the shinier black on the arms. And then that matte black carries all the way down, but there are some silver accents just punched in here and there. And again, it's not much, but it's enough to give you a sense of there's a little bit of metal work going on. Where'd it go? Here on the gauntlet. Oh, well, I guess the belt has a different trim color coming around the outside of it. And then, of course, the six discs on the torso feel slightly marbly, like there may be some electricity hiding back in there. And then on the back, oh, well, Maybe there is another color punched in there, right there. But that doesn't seem to carry around to the front of the torso, just right there. And then the trim work on the belt, there's some lines on the butt part, some wrinkles on the back of the legs, then the bands coming around to hold the shin plates. Up at the head, I was worried about this because Metacom has a track record with their final figures not actually looking like the prototype. And the pictures I'd seen so far of this, I thought, eh, it's a little bit off, but having it in hand, in person, some shadows working with it, I really like it. It may not be perfect, 
but it's close. I mean, especially in the eyes, you can see that they're two different colors. Yeah, the, you know, the acquired eye on this side. There's some scarring to the eye from Ragnarok. The beard is sculpted and nice, but I feel like the paint misses it a little bit. And then the hair sculpt, great detail, and there's some gradation in there. Some dry brushing from light brown to dark brown. You can even see the slice marks from the bad haircut he got in Ragnarok. But at least on this head, it's the eyes that do it for me. I mean, those looking so different, but so detailed. I love it. The cape is much better than I thought it would be. There's a lot going on here. They've sewn down the sides, but they bunched it up in the middle like it's hanging. It feels like layers of material, which it is layers. There's the red outside, and then there's the black on the inside. You can see the stitch work right there. Small, well, as small as they can get it, but still doesn't feel in scale, but that's just what happens when you put cloth capes on 1 12th scale action figures. So the outside is very dynamic, and because of, well, I don't know if, is that? in there somehow these pleats on the inside it makes it look nice too two wires running on the outside on both sides and with that you can get some nifty poses sweeping out but when you come down you also get nice wrinkles to it it's not just one flat lego looking cape on the left side the wire goes all the way from down here and it attaches somewhere under the shoulder plate but on this side it doesn't feel like it's attached to anything up here. It's still a nice wire. You can get some detail in it. I've also seen people having trouble with the wire sticking up out of the material. I can see that happening now that this is a loose part. Well, I can shove it in there and it gets a little bit of... Hmm. hmm. I've already put this through the paces of poses and swapping parts. So I noticed a couple of things like when you extend the knee as far as it'll go. At least on mine, when I bring it back... It gets stuck on the bottom part right there, and I have to force it a little bit. Left side, not a problem. Whoop, whoop. I also have to admit, it is a slight diaper look to the pants. It's just how a rubber piece is going to look when it's covering articulation down there. And then at the head, this is swappable. That You have different heads, but when you go to pull the head off, the neck comes off. Now that is because you can swap out this top part too, but this just feels a little too loose. And if you try to crank forward, it always pops off the ball. It's not enough to make it move on its own, but it's just enough to make you go, oh, well, I wish that was tighter. And this is where I'm gonna stray away from my normal format of, you know, look at the figure, go through some nitpicks, articulation, and then swapping parts. I'm gonna go ahead and swap a part now to get the cape out of the way. Because this figure comes with an alternate upper torso and arm set up. And more than anything that comes with this set, the electricity, the alternate heads, the hands, the weapon, this is the most bang for my buck, I think. And this is also the reason that the bottom of the neck is as loose as it is. You're supposed to pop it away, and then the mid torso also pops away. There's a dumbbell joint right here, socket, just take the other one and it goes right on. This goes here, swap the hands over to here, and then you'll also see the holes. Another discussion we'll have in just a few minutes. You pop the discs off one torso, plug them into the other. At first I was worried about this, but the more I've done it, it's not a big deal at all. And with that, it keeps the same silhouette, the same proportions. He's just a tough looking bastard. I mean, he's not super huge and buff, but there is a presence, there is a power here that comes across in plastic so perfectly. It's just a good looking figure. For articulation, there is a ball joint at the top of the neck, a ball joint at the bottom. He can look up. Like I said, when you try to push too far forward, it pops the bottom ball, but he can look down. Unfortunately, this hard plastic collar piece going around, it's in the way a bit, but there's still tilt. And then of course there's swivel, but again, runs into the collar piece. There's a shoulder assembly that you can move up, you can move down, it butterflies forward, and that's the same on both torsos. I feel like there's more movement to this one for some reason, but that may be just my imagination. Outside of that is a hinge. You can bring the arm up and then it does swivel around, but for some reason, the ball, is that an, what's going on in there? It likes to get caught up on itself and I don't know why, but you can bring the arm all the way around. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow, oh, all the way up. Same on both. The wrist is a swivel hinge swivel, up and down, or you can bring it around side to side. Dumbbell at the mid torso, you have to be careful to not get it caught or like right there, you can bunch it. If you pull back, you're going to pop that joint. It's supposed to pop forward, back, eh, slight tilt, barely any rotation, but that's at the bottom. See? Okay, right there. We're going to stop and do that real quick. I do have a slight problem with the discs popping out of the belt. The belt is a separate piece and it is rubbery. So it doesn't hold on to those discs as good as the hard plastic of the torso. So you get crazy with it and the figure itself 
punches the pegs out of the belt. But there's a ball joint at the waist, lots of hula hooping. Like most Mayfex, it is easy to get shifted off to the side, and you have to fight with this, and fight with the top, and get, and so it's a little work, but not terrible. Drop down joint at the hip, comes forward, back, out is restricted. There's rotation up under there, hidden. Double knee, but that's barely past 90, isn't it? Just too much boot right there, not enough cut. Dumbbell joint at the ankle goes back a bit, forward. That gives you great side to side rocker though. And then a toe joint goes all the way up. For accessories, Thor comes with two fists, comes with two relaxed hands, there's two splayed out hands, and then two grip hands. And like most Mafex, there is no mushroom to the peg. It's just the tightness and the friction, once it's on there, it's not coming off. There are three different head options in the package we've already looked at. There's the one with the robotic type eye that he got from Rocket, but there's also an eye patch head from the very first of the movie. Same details other than the eye patch. But then there's also the electric eyes head. You know, he's not the god of hammers. He's the god of thun- wait, thunder's not electricity. And with that, like I said, the neck always pops off when you want to pop the head, but the neck is Hemsworth long enough to where you can just grab it and pull it off the head. And you noticed how loud that was. Getting the others on takes a little bit of force. Of course, he's gonna come with Stormbreaker and again, beautiful detail here. But I feel like the handle, the wood part, and even the head itself could have used a wash to bring out the details. Just bring in some black here and this would have popped. The hand is easy enough to flex out and not a problem to put that in there. And then for the last of the accessories, even though there are quite a few of these, there's the electric effects. First off, there's a couple of additions to Stormbreaker. There's one for the blade. Kind of looks like it's flaring out as it swings down. And the same thing for the hammer side, just electricity leaking off of it. For that, I haven't figured out which way exactly. Oh, well, it's almost a pop. It doesn't just fall off, but if you barely tap it, it comes off. And then for the blade electricity, the long piece here goes up over the top. And there's actually a sculpted groove for the blade to fit in. You run the blade up the groove until it stops and then push the bottom on. And the translucency of the blue along with the white overspray, man, ooh, they look good. But then for the rest of the effects, I, I've already shown that these come off. And at first I thought, oh man, I've got to keep these in the exact order. That way I know where they go back. But the top ones are bigger slightly smaller, and then the smallest are on the belt. And then you can also see that the holes have a shape to them. The right side are Pac-Man shaped, <laughs> and the left side are D-shaped. The ab discs have a longer peg on them, so those are the most secure out of the three pairs. And then the belt piece. That one's fairly easy. This one's a tight fit, and I ain't complaining. Well, okay, I got it out easier that time, but I've never had a problem with it popping out. And then you get these. These are awesome. Look at the back, if it's a D-shape, it pops on the left side. And this one threw me off at first because it goes down. I thought all of them went up. I had checked the box and yep, that one goes that way. Well here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the cape body on because yeah, it's essentially just turning it until you find the right direction for the peg. Plus it's a little easier to find the direction of these because you already know where the electricity is going out. You have a general idea before you even plug them in. The problem with the black tiny discs is you can get it, especially the belt, they're small and it's hard to get the right direction. So I essentially plug them in and then rotate until they finally, boop. Mm, that one's a Pac-Man plug, so it goes right there. I also left the hands off on purpose because there's also these pieces that go on the forearm. I guess you could put it this way if you want them shooting out a little bit or you have the arm up in the air so the electricity travels up. I just like the look of it on this way. This one is large enough to slide down over the hand though. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or what's going on there. But once you have it all together, it's just so dynamic and it works so well against the plainness, I guess. I, we talked about the sculpt being there, but as far as paint and colors go on the costume, it's very bland. So adding the electricity to it, ooh, that makes it pop on the shelf. That blue is gonna stand out, the little hint of red coming up behind it, Thor's face, the hammer, just, yeah. If you want to put the electricity pieces on him with bare arms, that works too. So there's so many options here. Hotwise Thor stands at about, well, slightly under six and a quarter inches tall. Here he is with the Mafex, Black Panther, and Spider-Man. I think Chadwick Boseman is six foot, Chris Hemsworth is six foot three. So I feel like this works. I don't have a Figure Arts Thor. I didn't like the look of that, so I never ordered it. But here it is with the Bandai SH Figure Arts Infinity War Captain America with a custom head and the SH Figure Arts Black Widow from Infinity War. Evans is six foot. 
Hemsworth is six foot three. If you really, really wanted to, you could probably shift down the legs a bit. That gives them more height if you wanted to move this into your figure arts display. Because even with the figure arts Bucky and Doctor Strange, again, Thor's taller. He should be. But here it is with the Marvel Legends Ragnarok Thor and then Infinity War Thor. Man, Hasbro made these guys big. Because those are even big for the Marvel Legends Infinity War Captain America and Black Widow. Of course, Captain America has custom head, custom shields. I feel like the Mezco Ragnarok Thor is a better fit for the Marvel Legends line. Way better than Marvel Legends' own Thor. And then here's the Marvel Legends Valkyrie. Here he is with the SH Figure Arts Infinity War Thanos. And uh, which movie is this Hulk from? Hmm. Puny God. Here he is with the Mafex Dark Knight Trilogy Two-Face and then the Mafex Shazam. Zachary Levi is six foot four, I believe. Their movie lines fit together fairly well, unless it's Suicide Squad and then that doesn't fit. So at the end of the day, I, I have my new favorite Thor bottom line. Even if it wasn't for all the options, and there are a hell of a lot of options here, just the overall feel of the figure, the presence it has on the shelf, the way it looks just like Thor from the movie, I, that wins it for me. Like I said, I had skipped on the figure arts, and judging from other people's reviews, these both seem about the same size, so I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything by skipping that one. When I saw pictures of this, yes, there was that in the back of my head, that little voice going, Oh, it's gonna have problems. But I chanced it. I rolled the dice and I ended up with a kick-ass Thor. Hell, I feel the urge right now to get two of them because I need one with the cape and the armor and all the electricity on it and then the other with the bare arms just hanging out with the rest of the crew. And for the problems that Metacom has here and there, they've almost mastered that thinking of so many options that you need two. Like with the Policeman Joker, there was extra parts to make you want to get an extra of the other Joker. And then the Batmans with the Bruce Wayne parts that you want to swap onto. And then you need two of those too. Here, yes, you'll have two Thors, but it's two completely different looks for Thor. And I'll admit, there are tiny pieces. And there were a couple times where I was... Uh, 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 no! But at the same time, once it was in there, I wasn't too worried about it. It wasn't the frustration I went through last week, that's for sure. Again, we all have our gripes with Metacom, with the Mafex line, but I, I can't help feeling that they're improving steadily. They still throw a speed bump every now and then, but I don't know. The overall quality of the piece usually allows me to look past stuff like that. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh.